Good morning. Welcome to my laboratory. What I want to demonstrate this morning is a few things uh, about uh, using the measurements of the Rigol 1054Z oscilloscope. Uh, and what I'm going to be talking about here is, is uh, generally true for most digital oscilloscopes. Usually, when you ask the scope to make a measurement, it'll use only the data that's actually displayed on the screen. Uh, the Rigol has the option of either using the full screen or uh, a portion of the screen that's set by some cursors, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now, the entire... I'm going to be zooming in and out to show various, various things here. Uh, this little top bar here shows the entire memory buffer and then also the portion, that little portion right there that is what is on the screen display. Um, so you can see from that that the, uh, the whole memory right now is holding a lot more information than just what we're seeing on the screen. Now the Rigol has a hardware frequency counter and that's what this is here and this is showing uh, the, the frequency calculated from the entire memory buffer uh, right here. But that's the only measurement that is calculated from the entire memory buffer. The, uh, what I call the left menu measurements, which are displayed down here, average, duty cycle, minimum, uh, minimum, maximum, those are calculated just from the screen or from the portion of the screen that you select with um, with cursors that I'll show you in a moment. So right now what we're looking at is the signal from a little apparatus and I'm showing uh, the uh, V out, this is the voltage across the load from this apparatus and the I out, this is the current uh, or rather the voltage drop across a 1 ohm current viewing resistor um, in series with the load of the apparatus. And then I have a math trace here, the purplish, purplish trace, darker blue purplish, that's showing the instantaneous uh, multiplication of those two traces. And down here you can see that where the math is indicated, math is channel 1 times channel 2, and that's being displayed at 5 watts, 5.00 watts per division. Okay, so uh, the average that's being computed right now from the screen display is 748, 750 milliwatts. This is a bug in the scope, it doesn't change the measurements to the to the watts like it should. But since we're using a 1 ohm current viewing resistor, the millivolts translates to milliwatts. So that's telling you the height of this purplish blue math peak right here, or the average of it. And then over here, that's the height of that peak, 1.72, or 17.2, 17.6, almost 18 watts for the maximum of that instantaneous wattage peak there. Okay, but what I'm concerned with here is mostly the average that's being computed by the scope of that math trace. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to do, so that we can see it a little bit better, is to go to the... Sorry about that. Go to the measurement menu here. Measure. And then we'll select... large font size. Okay, and then that boosts those fonts up so that they're a little bit easier to read down there, but there's only room to display three of the measurements now. Okay. 
Now, what I'm going to do is change the... Uh, sorry about all the zooming action. There's so much information on this screen that it's really hard to to uh, see everything at once on my camera. So what I'm going to do now is change the horizontal time base to show more and more and more cycles of that waveform on the screen. Okay, so watch what happens to the average measurement as I do that. So you can see that the what it reports as average depends on what's actually displayed on the screen. Here I have the time base set so fast that all you're seeing is mostly the zero portion with just a little edge of the peak coming up. And sure enough, that knocks the average down to quite a bit lower. Okay, so if we go back to this setting, where we're reading an average of 740 about millivolts, milliwatts. Now, let's go ahead and change to where we have one peak displayed. Still 740 milliwatts, average. But let's say that we're concerned about the average of just that peak there. What exactly is the average value of that math peak? Okay, so you can see how that really changed the reading there since now we're displaying mostly the peak and we don't have very much of the zero uh, waveform displayed. Okay, so now if I go to the measure menu and I select the range item here, range, and then I have the option of selecting screen or cursors. So I select the cursor item and then I move the cursor A. The cursors don't stay on for some reason. I move the cursor A to the left edge and the cursor B to the right edge of that pulse. Now the average is computed just between the cursors and I have an average of about 9 watts in there in that peak. Or if I want to make sure that I get an average across one entire waveform, I can display one full waveform on the screen, like that, and then use the cursor A to select the left edge of that total pulse and the cursor B to select the right edge like that and now my average is just across one full waveform and this average I believe 630 milliwatts is the average of that power trace across just one period of the waveform. Uh, okay, that's uh, almost 10 minutes. That's about what I wanted to show. Thank you for watching and beware of these average values. Know what goes into them. Uh, it can either be the whole screen 
not the entire memory buffer, but just what's on the screen. And so if you have uh, some something different than an integer number of waveforms displayed on the screen, those average values are not going to be correct. Uh, the ability to use the cursor to define the area on the screen that you're interested in computing values for uh, is a big plus. It's a good feature of the Rigol 1054Z scope. Okay, thank you for watching.